Given its height advantage and the sparse terrain around, there is no way of approaching without being noticed. Sure enough, even though Jara tries to approach with stealth, the Devil Moth suddenly pauses in mid-air and then darts quickly in the party's direction. Alright, so we're going to be fighting a boss. Oh, it has massive HP. Okay, this is going to be rather problematic. Hello and welcome to Trials of Fire. This game just came out of early access on Steam and I'd highly recommend checking it out if you're a fan of roguelites and and or maybe deck building and maybe RPGs and general party combat, positional tactical combat as well. And personally, I've only played through the combat tutorial so far as this is a pure first impressions from my part, but I have already pretty much fallen in love with this. I feel like the positional combat is super, super satisfying. The animations are great. Let's just dive right in so you can actually see what's going on here as well. Choose the difficulty of your first adventure. Don't worry too much. You can change the difficulty whenever you start a new one. All right, so I actually have played quite a lot of tactical combat or card games. However, I am pretty bad at them. So I'm going to be just playing on medium Although I very much enjoy these kinds of games, I eh, tend to make some rather questionable decisions. Let's just say that. Anyway, here's your quest. You have you have your quest right here. You get a chance to choose between uh, law quests. You could choose uh, whether you want to change, you know, ch choose your um, the standard quest that you get at the top here, or you could play uh, the seasonal one as well. So obviously, we're just going to be playing the regular one, an infinitely replayable custom quest where the challenges are different every time. Play how you want to play or compete against your friends for high scores. And then obviously, you can choose what you want to play here. So for example, we have Warrior, Hunter, and Elementalist, and you can also choose the game length so it can be short, standard, or long. We're just going to play standard, I think. That's seems pretty good to me and we can reset the name and we can also change the gender and everything and we can uh, change their maybe we can change their gear yeah we can change their gear later on I believe you can also level up your party and you can see here these are the other heroes that you might be able to unlock if you are lucky enough to be good at the game or in general if you're lucky enough to learn relatively quickly but for now, we're just going to be playing with the Warrior, the Hunter, and the Elementalist. We also have items potentially, but of course we don't have any right now. So let us just begin our journey and we will see what happens. The settlement Terralin is dying. You must track down the settlement's leader, Nea, who has ventured into the grasslands, or shall we say the glasslands even, in search of a powerful artifact, but has not been heard from for weeks. And our new objective is to follow in her footsteps track her down and return with her or have news of her fate and you can see here that if you want more backstory more world building then you're going to have that just by mousing over here if you want to read this then obviously you can do that by pausing the video otherwise we're just going to continue onward welcome to ash to complete your quest to save terralin you must undertake a perilous journey over the surface of a ravaged planet follow the golden objective marker to reach your next quest destination to keep your supplies up and to find weapons and equipment crucial to your quest, the party must visit points of interest highlighted on the map. During your journey, you will need to keep track of your party's fatigue and morale levels. Keep an eye on your party's fatigue level to keep in top fighting form. To keep your party fresh, be sure to rest regularly. By clicking this image, you will get the most benefit from resting in ruins and settlements where you can find shelter from the harsh conditions of ash. Resting requires food supplies. Because of the urgency of your mission, you only have a limited time to complete your objectives before despair overtakes your heroes. Take some time to explore, but keep morale high by making steady pr progress towards your objective. So there is obviously a time limitation on this. There's a morale thing that we have to be very, very aware of. And also we have this. You can view your party's inventory as well as the items currently equipped by clicking on one of the hero port portraits on the left of the book. From here you can manage and view your hero's combat deck by rearranging equipment. And choices matter. Now this is something very cool in my opinion. The game constantly saves your progress so you can leave and drop back in at any time but there is also no going back on your choices. Be warned though the land of ash is brutal and unforgiving and death in trials of fire. 
is permanent. If your whole party is defeated in battle, you'll need to start a new adventure, so be careful out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, all right, so here we go. This is the world map, as you can quite clearly tell, and now we can move our party anywhere we wish. So it will probably be, uh, well, that's the, that's where that's where our quest needs to be, or that's where, that's where our quest is. But I'm going to just move down here real quick because I would like to move a bit to the left and we're going to see what else we can encounter. In a partly ruined human town taken over by ratlings, you see three ratlings enjoying a game of hoops in a narrow alleyway. Ask to join the game. It's an obs obsidian and shop. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Malkin throws a rope circle around one of the ratlings' pegs. The ratlings applaud you warmly and ask, ask you to fetch your 20 obsidian winnings along with your original stake. On the next round, they want to increase the stakes to 60 obsidian to try to win their money back. Alright, so I have 70 obsidian, so obviously they are... That, that is the currency in the game. And I'm actually thinking that they're trying to swindle me right now. So I'm actually going to try and take my winnings and leave. Oh, they, okay, apparently they didn't try to swindle me because I thought we'd actually get into a battle with them or something like that. But there you go. Opposite the tavern is a well-provisioned shop run by two female ratlings. Okay, so what do we have here? We have crafting materials, more crafting materials for upgrades and so on and so forth. And then we also have this. Now, bear in mind that equipment also provides you with different cards. So, for example, if I were to equip this, then I would gain the stalk card by the looks of things. Your combo strikes deal plus two damage if you are not adjacent to any friendly characters. Now, you'll understand, you, you'll, you'll, you'll get what I mean and what cards mean and so on and so forth when we enter our first battle. And uh, combo strikes are pretty important. And if you can maximize your advantage with them, then you're going to have a really, really nice time. Anyway, let's go into this one instead. A plume of smoke alerts you to a burning caravan up ahead. Bodies of ratlings and humans litter the area. Alright, so attempt to salvage something from the caravan before it is consumed in flames. Let's do it. Ooh. As you attempt to put out the blaze in the dry heat, a lick of flame crawls up Jara's arm, leaving a wicked burn. So she's going to take a little bit of damage. Despite the fire, you manage to salvage some useful goods from the wreckage. Ooh, now that's a rare crafting material. That could be really useful. I'm not entirely sure what it's going to be for, but we're going to take it nevertheless and then move on. There we go. All right, what is this, though? What is this over here? Let's see. The area here is dry with scattered pools of sparkling water, giving a strangely hypnotic landscape. You are standing in the Ran Valley, though only tiny remnants of the once mighty river remain. As you approach a pool of water, a group of basilisks emerge from beneath the surface, and the largest hisses at you menacingly. Alright, this is a hard battle. Let's do it. <laughs> you see, I make terrible decisions. I, I warned you, I warned you, I said at the very start, I'm pretty bad at roguelites, and this is exactly the reason why I'm pretty bad at them, because I generally tend to want to fight in these games a lot, and uh, generally that can be uh, maybe kind of harsh. Anyway, defend two after performing a melee attack. Okay, so here we go. We have a number of different cards here. Each, uh, each of the heroes starts with three cards, and we have willpower as well. So there's a recycle shrine at the top of the screen. Basically what that means is you need willpower, which is kind of like mana for other games, to be able to play cards. Some cards do not require anything like that. So for example, prepare, that requires no willpower whatsoever. And we also have swipe here and force missile and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I am not uh, having enough willpower to do that. So for example, if I want to recycle a card, I right click on it. Or you can click and drag it over to the Recycle Shrine and then I gain one willpower. So now I can technically use this if I wasn't out of range. So technically what I could do is I could move my Elementalist a little bit forward. But I've already used, yeah, you guessed it, my willpower to actually move forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to press Backspace. And that is going to reverse all of my... Um, all of my actions up until that point. Bear in mind that I only get one of those reversals every single combat scenario, so I've just wasted it just to show you what the mechanic is all about. Hmm, very good. But otherwise, let's have a look here. Okay, improvised attack. Okay, yeah, so what we're going to do 
is I think we're going to try and focus on this guy as best as we can. And I'm going to sacrifice every time you play a card that deals range damage, gain one willpower. That's actually really, really powerful, but I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get it. Let's actually just take a quick look. Let's use this. Let's uh, sacrifice that, and then we'll do improvised. Uh, um, yeah, sh shall we actually do that? I'm just going to sacrifice both of these. So we have three willpower right now. So technically what I can do is I can play focus on this guy. And then we can use improvised attack. There we go. That's actually really nice. So now we gain an additional willpower. So technically what I can do is I can then... I can probably move the elementalist. So we should probably move the elementalist somewhere like this. And then we will end the turn. Bear in mind that willpower does not get carried over. But, oh, look, what's going on here? Oh, really? Going into defensive stance? Okay, that's kind of a bit strange. But I guess I'm kind of happy to see that. Okay, here we go, here we go. Are they actually going to attack? It doesn't... Oh, maybe they are? Yeah, there we go. There's a little bit of an attack right there. But that is not really going to make too much difference, I don't think. I think we're going to have a pretty easy time of things. So, also hits anyone directly behind the target. If you hit two targets, you gain one willpower from that. So that's really nice. Every time you play a card that deals melee damage, gain one willpower. Bear in mind that they all have defense now, which is going to make things a little bit more difficult. And... We also have this. Now, this is obviously pretty bad for me, because here's the thing. Um, the Elementalist attacks, they also have friendly fire damage. So technically, uh, if you'll excuse the pun, because we obviously used a fire attack right there, but generally, you want to be very careful with the Elementalist's abilities, because they can deal damage to, well, everything in the area. So that's a bit of a bit of a problem. Anyway, this is a named effect. So basically, I have now caused this basilisk, basilisk to suffer two status damage at the end of the turn. And I now have advance, which I personally feel I'm going to move back here. And we're going to do uh, we're going to do a couple of things. All right. So what we're going to do first is we are going to try, if I can, we're going to get rid of swipe. We're going to try and use advance to move around here. We're going to use a little bit more willpower to move around once again. And then I'm thinking we're going to recycle the advance from the, um, from the elementalist just to gain her a little bit of defense, just in case. And then I'm hopeful that maybe what we can do Maybe I can play this and move again. Yes, I am able to do that. So let's do this. Okay, so now combo strike. So obviously they're going to give me the tutorial again anyway, just in case I didn't go through the combat tutorial beforehand. But basically what it means is that whenever you're ganging up on one enemy and no other enemies are around you, you're going to be able to deal an additional one damage. Sometimes if you were to have a particular piece of equipment or something, that would increase the damage of your combo strike, which is really quite amazing. So as you can see here, they cannot perform a combo strike if they are adjacent to more than a single enemy. So yeah, this is this is actually quite important. So let's see what we can do here. So technically, I'm gonna I could do a uh, swipe as you can see, and that's gonna deal four damage, which is in my opinion not enough. Oh, four damage. Mm, once again, four damage. Okay, it seems like we're going to have to do something. Uh, we're gonna have to do two 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 attacks, I guess, if we can. I think we can do two attacks. Boom, there we go. Okay, so we've eliminated one Basilisk out of the possible three. And now I'm basically just going to end the turn and we'll see what we can do. I'm going to keep this card because technically you can actually keep cards in your hand until the next turn. But you can't keep willpower. So obviously that's a bit of, uh, yeah, a, bit of a strategic slash tactical decision that you have to determine for yourself. Anyway, magic attack on all three targets in the indicated area. That might be really, really useful. Unfortunately, this is a really bad angle, as you can quite clearly tell. So if even if I were to want to do this, um, it's going to only hit this person, which is not really going to work too well. So what else can we do? Every time you play a card that deals magic damage, gain one willpower. We could potentially use that and sacrifice swipe. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we'll probably do that. Let's do this. And then we're going to play... Oh, I can't play that now. Mm, yes. Mm. Okay, so every single hero, at least most, some heroes, have a special ability. So, for example, the element, Elementalist, for example, the first card you play each turn costs minus one willpower. And I think, I think we other... Yeah, the other ones also have, as you can see right here, the Hunter also has a, 
uh, an ability here. Your first attack on a single target each turn deals plus two damage, which is insane. Super, super high damage right there. And then obviously the warrior is more of the tank. Once per turn after you play a card and are adjacent to an enemy, defend two on all other heroes. So it's really, really strong. But the elementalist, I already used that uh, particular thing. So it's not really going to make any difference whatsoever. So I'm just going to do this and then we're going to do this and then we'll gain one willpower back from that. And then maybe what we can do is we can do like a double strike. Yeah, this is this is looking pretty nice right here. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll advance over. I'm actually thinking here. And then we're going to do double strike. And then we're going to go for, we could do strike through, but I don't know whether I want to do that or whether, because here's the thing, I could use advance and then I could move around here, which I think I'm probably going to do. Bear in mind that I can't use ranged attacks while I am in, oh, okay. can I do this? Yeah, that didn't, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Okay. So what about if I, I'm just going to do that. Because I would like to try and get combo strike. Yeah, there we go. And now look at this. Now we've gained so much armor for our warrior. Hopefully it's going to reduce the overall damage that we take. And maybe if I get an, a, 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 the ability to move away with my hunter, I might be able to use power shot. And that's going to deal so much damage. So I'm hopeful that that will work. Okay, they're going to defend. That's absolutely fine. If they want to do that, they are more than uh, more than welcome to do so. Oh, this is actually perfect. Let's do Force Missile, I suppose. Nice, look at that. We dealt massive damage right there. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Okay, so Power Shot and then Prepare. Gain one willpower at the start of the turn. Okay, I don't really care about that too much. So we can technically swipe, which is going to do four damage. But I don't really want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy over here. Then we're going to use Power Shot. Can I not do that? No, I, I can't do that. I need one more willpower to do that. So let's get rid of one power shot and then we'll use power shot on this guy. That's going to deal so much damage. Look at that. Five damage. Just crazy, crazy damage right there. Wild swing. Melee attack that deals three to six melee damage. That's actually really nice. I'm thinking we're probably going to do that. So that means... Actually, you know what? That's a bit of an RNG ability. I'm not a big fan of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use double strike instead. And we're just going to eliminate this one. And we're going to gain armor back from this, which is really nice, because that means... Because obviously we have defensive stance on right now, which means that we gain two defense after performing a melee attack. So using the double strike attack gives us four armor, which is basically all of the attack that the Basilisk can currently do. So we are pretty good, if I do say so myself. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's go to the next turn. And uh, this is a hard battle. Bear that in mind. This is actually a hard battle, so... I was I was fully expecting to get murdered and eaten by these basilisks. By equipping good quality weapons and items, your heroes can gain a number of redraws, which can be used in each battle. And one great way to use your redraws is to replace weakness cards in your hand with useful skill cards. Try this now. To do this, recycle the weakness card. Ah, exhausted, as you can see right here. Okay, yeah, let's let's just uh, recycle that. After doing this, click on the redraw icon, which is over here, and then we can redraw it. There we go. Well done. You should now see that the recycled cards have now been replaced by new cards from the deck. Each hero may only redraw once per turn. Oh, actually, that's actually not even that bad. Once per turn is pretty good. Uh, as well as replacing weakness cards, you can use redraws to search for power cards early or completely replace an, effect in, an ineffective hand of cards. Uh, that sounds, sounds good to me. All right, so do we have... No, we have Wild Swing and we have uh, Exhausted. Okay, yeah, so we're just going to get rid of that and then we'll redraw. There we go. We also have Exhausted here and then we'll redraw. We'll just do that. And then we have Improvised Attack. So that basically just changes dependent on the situation and the circumstances. And I think what we're going to do is, hmm, yeah, that, that's, no, that's not going to work. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're probably going to, can I use advance and actually, yeah, I can actually jump over. That is pretty crazy. I'm not going to do that right now. And instead, what we're going to do is I'm probably going to use, hmm. Ah, uh, that's kind of interesting. I'm thinking Wild Swing 
Every time you play a card that deals melee damage, gain one willpower. That's actually kind of nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Adrenaline. Does that replace the power that I currently have? No. Okay, so two power... Wow, that's actually kind of insane. Having two power cards active at any one time. That's really, really nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of Advance, going to get rid of Prepare, and we're going to use Improvised Attack, most likely. And or Wild Swing. I'm thinking Improvised Attack for the moment. And then maybe strike through as well. I'm not entirely sure whether that's going to make a difference. Okay, well, swipe is definitely going to go. So what about wild swing? I mean, we might be able to deal massive damage with that. That was actually pretty decent. I don't think that that was too bad. And let's do this and do this. And then I'm going to do wild swing again because I might be able to get five damage. No, I only got three damage, but that's okay because our warrior is the only one in melee range at the moment. So that's the only one that really matters. Anyway, we're going to do a little bit more damage with our hunter right there. And then we're just going to go to the next turn. This should be a pretty easy victory going on from here. And I'm, I'm going to say I didn't play it perfectly by any means. Certainly did not play it perfectly. But this is one of the first relatively large-scale, hard-difficulty battles that I've done. So I hope you will forgive me. And uh, let me see if I can murder this guy. There we go. Done. Fantastic. All right. So I hope we leveled up from that, to be honest. Because uh, that, was a, that was a hard battle, apparently. So let's see what we get. Yeah, look at that. Nice. With the creatures defeated, you come across a small pool of water that appears to be bubbling from an underground source. The water seems to be drinkable. Oh, now that's actually very nice. As you can see here, we are... Um, yeah, our stamina resting here will restore. And we have uh, morale and so on. So, yeah. Oh, Dragon Bone Club. Oh, now that looks nice. Look at that. Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm thinking we're probably going to be uh, giving that. Can we give that to someone already? How do we uh, How do we access the inventories? I obviously have no idea how to do that just yet. Probably once we're on the um, the main the main map. Okay, so I actually think the warrior and the hunter did the most in this. So I'm thinking we're probably going to level up our warrior here. And I'm thinking that... Hmm... Where is a double strike? Yes, a double strike I think is super, super powerful, but we also have that other thing that gives us two defense. Yeah, I think that power card is really, really strong. So we'll see what happens with that. But what do we have here? Drag a skill card from below to replace one of your old class skills or click on a card on the left to upgrade it. So can I not upgrade anything but these? Apparently I can't upgrade anything but these, which is... Not exactly great. 5 to 8 damage. That's actually kind of insane though. 5 to 8 damage. Yeah, I'm thinking that's actually quite nice. Uh, but I can't upgrade. Can I? Are you sure that I can't upgrade double strike? Yeah, I can. But why can't I? Why can't I upgrade that right now? It says view upgrade. I would love to be able to, but it doesn't allow me to do so, which is a bit strange. Maybe I'm just not working out how that actually... Uh, how that actually works. Okay, well, let's take a look at the other cards here. Choose a friendly character. All damage to that character is transferred to you until the end. Uh, actually, until the start of the next turn. Move two, gain one willpower, and then pull all enemies within... Wow. Within range three. That's actually kind of insane, too. Move two to target melee attack three and inflict immobilized. That can be super, super good. And all attacks deal plus one damage per adjacent enemy. That's actually super, super good too. Wow. There's actually some really... Oh, this is a difficult decision actually. I'm thinking either we want to just go for a wild swing, massive, massive damage bonus, or we want to go for something crazy cool like goad. I'm thinking goad is probably going to be super fun. So we're going to have to replace something. Let's just replace swipe. One of the swipes. I think that seems like a good idea. We're going to take all in terms of all of those things, and then we're just going to move on. All right, the party has been traveling non-stop, and now would be a good time to stop and rest before your heroes are too tired to fight effectively. The more sheltered your current, lo your current location, the more effective your rest will be. And if you can find a settlement or living world ruin to rest, such as your current location, you can also restore a little bit of health for all heroes. To make camp, click on the stamina tracker. All right, let's do it.
Although your mission is urgent, you will need to stop to rest and recover stamina and health along the way. Each time you rest, your party will consume one unit of food, so make sure you keep stocked up. Well, I don't think I can really do anything about that right now, because I haven't been to any... Uh, well, I have been to a shop, but I don't think they had any food there. You can use the downtime and the resources you've collected to improve your hero's decks by choosing one of the available camp activities every time you rest. Try to do this whenever you can, as your time is limited. Regardless of the activity, you will always need one food and will restore stamina and health based on where you are camped. Alright, so we can upgrade items as you can see right there. And we can also heal injuries and things like that, but uh, we don't actually have any injuries right now. So let's actually upgrade something, shall we? Um, so, can I not... Um uh, I, I, maybe I want to upgrade this a little bit. Maybe I want to upgrade this. I mean, what is that going to do? Strike through is going to gain a bit of an upgrade from that. And the bone sword. Ah, the bone sword has double strike as an ability. Okay, now that's actually kind of interesting. Target discards one card for every two damage taken from bash that's actually kind of nice the first melee attack you perform each turn deals plus three damage what this dragon bone club is so nice i'd love to equip this can i not equip this right now yes i think i can there we go all right let's equip that can she dual wield she can dual wield are you serious that's actually kind of crazy okay i'm happy with this okay yes that is great okay so let me uh let me just uh, let me let me try try this. Okay, so technically I can upgrade double strike. So I'm actually gonna do that straight away because I th feel like upgrading double strike is super super powerful. And now we're just going to uh, just going to rest and that's it. And then we'll break camp. Did I use two food without meaning to right there? Yeah, I think I might have. But we are full HP now, so that should be quite fine. What's this? Ruins. Hmm. What's this? Battle is likely in these places. Okay, sure. I mean, I'm pretty happy to do any kind of battle because I feel like the fighting is super fun in this game. A small arched stone bridge with various stones missing crosses a long since dried up river. You notice that the keystone of the bridge's arch is made of a black volcanic stone. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Okay, so we have the opportunity to either get an epic reward or to scour the riverbed and gain food. I only have two food, so I'm thinking we're going to scour the riverbed. Climbing over the ancient remnants of the riverbank, you are alarmed to find several large reptiles waiting for you, all with sharp-looking tails. Alright, and here we go. Alright, so are we actually... <laughs> We're fighting basilisks. Okay, that's actually kind of amusing. Because I personally don't have a problem with uh, dealing with these guys anymore. I think we should kind of be fine. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do basically the exact same thing that we did beforehand. And I felt like we did a pretty decent job at it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to place my guys all around here. We're going to use advance to move like this. And then we're going to use flame fan just to move a little bit more. And that is it. That's it. Uh, wait a minute. With more than one card in the hand. Oh, okay. That's kind of unfortunate. Can I actually do some damage here? No. Yeah. If you didn't know already, uh, obstacles and things like that do have an effect on ranged attacks, so it is highly unlikely that you're going to be able to um, use, uh, you know, ranged attacks just whenever you want. You have to be, um, you have to be within line of sight to be able to make that work. Okay, so here we go. Chop. Melee attack. Oh, wow. That's actually kind of um, pretty significant. Okay, well, I have double strike, so that is all that I really need. Not enough willpower. Okay, of course. Ah, I always forget about that. I really do. I always forget about that. Okay, so let me just do this. Let me do this. Can I use power? Can I? Yes, I can use power shot. That's going to deal so much damage. Let's do that. And let's get rid of a bunch of these. What is this? Uh, yeah, no. Let's just get rid of that. And then we'll, then we'll do double strike. That is going to be so, so powerful, especially for the defense. And then we can also use goad here as well. Oh, I should have actually done that beforehand <laughs> oh well never mind never mind okay uh, 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 you, you live and learn I suppose you live and learn okay so yeah we're gonna just use goad now then I guess and then I'm gonna use swipe to kill this there we go so powerful I feel like the warrior is so powerful right now I feel like we have a really really good uh, good defensive line especially utilizing this kind of 
this kind of environment, it really makes a huge difference. Okay, so it seems like I'm going to have to advance towards the opponent here, which is actually quite interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Alright, bash. That's actually quite nice. Let's do bash. Gonna ha he's going to have to discard a turn. Uh, actually, discard a card, but he doesn't, he doesn't seem to have done that for some reason. So, yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Okay, get, gain willpower at the start of the turn. Strike through, improvised attack. Okay, yeah, uh, these things can both go away. We can use power shot maybe. No, I can't actually move, unfortunately. So, I'll just have to wait with that. And maybe I can do something else. So, let's just get rid of a bunch of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to use adrenaline. And then I'm going to get rid of one more. And then we're going to use Wild Swing against this guy. Boom, four damage. That's not too bad. We've got seven defense now, which is just absolutely crazy. And we are now going to go on to the next one. Yeah, I mean, this guy is not going to be able to do anything to us right now. Ah, now look at what we have here. Congratulations, you have drawn your first heroic card. Heroics are powerful one-shot actions that you can use to swing the tide of battle. Heroic cards function just like normal ones, except for two significant differences. When a heroic card is played, it is removed from battle, so it can only be used once per time, and heroic cards cannot be duplicated by any game effect. I assume this is the heroic card? Yes, indeed. Melee attack 7 also hits all adjacent enemies to the target for 5 damage, and all enemies to spa- What? Oh, that is super powerful. Okay, yeah, that is crazy, crazy strong. The first melee attack, yeah, okay, we're going to just play this, and then we're going to do some real, real cool stuff. So let's get rid of this, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of all of this, I think. There we go, and now what we're going to do is we're going to literally murder this thing like no one's business. What do we have here? I just want to actually make sure that I, uh, the first melee attack you perform each turn deals plus three damage. So technically what I can do, yep. Barbaric Blow is lit. I think it's going to kill the guy. I think it should. It didn't. Okay, well, that's kind of unfortunate. But that's okay. Because we now have Power Shot. Boom. And we also have Wild Swing. So, boom. <laughs> we just had so much willpower because I'm literally just sacrificing all of my Elementalist's cards. Because I, I personally have found that her abilities are not that useful at least for me right now maybe they're going to be more useful a little bit later on so obviously that might make sense anyway we have another uh, we have another sword here which our warrior can use it is wide sweep melee attack five on all adjacent enemies that's actually quite good if you hit two or more targets draw a defend card from your deck wow that's actually really good i might might replace that okay so yeah we're gonna do that and we're gonna level up our hunter a little bit and what are we going to take? Because here's the thing. <laughs> what? Look at this. This is crazy. Okay. All ranged attacks deal plus two damage. All ranged attacks. And he's got a huge amount of ranged attacks. Let me tell you. So yeah, he is looking pretty good. I'm going to take Deadeye. And we're going to be replacing Swipe. There we go. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Okay. So let's go around the mountain here. Oh, we're actually going through the mountain. Oh, nice. I had no idea that you could go through that. Okay, so that's really nice. And otherwise, I am obviously wanting to make sure that we get there in time because uh, I'm starting to become tired, as you can see right there. So what is this? Elven Ruins. Ah, there's a chance for a huge amount of food right there. But what about rest? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go here and we'll see if I can maybe... Oh, look at that. What? What? That is, wow, that's that's actually crazy. Okay, that is really, really nice. Look at that. Mystic herbs and food supplies. Massive amount of food and everything. Okay, that's really good. And what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to go here. And I love double strike. Oh, that's the thing. I really love double strike. Because I've just upgraded it. But the bone claymore is so nice. I mean, literally, five melee attack on all adjacent enemies. I mean, that's so, so powerful. But Double Strike is really good too for um, activating the Defensive Stance ability. It really makes a huge difference. Mm. 
so uh, so difficult so difficult okay yeah uh, unfortunately we have no other weapons that will work with anyone else so we're just going to whoops okay that's not what we wanted to do thank you very much i thought i could press escape there okay so let's actually just go over oh i could have made camp back there actually can i make camp again yes i can okay let's actually make camp and upgrade or forget a class card from one hero yeah that could be really really useful actually Use crafting materials to upgrade an item. Okay, can I upgrade anything right here? No. As you can quite clearly tell, I don't have enough to be able to do that. So let's just go back and just rest. I can rest again technically as well. Shall I rest again? Yeah, shall we? Yeah, let's rest again and just get back to full, full freshness, shall we say. And now let's head into our story mission. As you approach the ruin described in Naya's writings, you spot an immense shape flittering above the broken buildings. Given its height advantage and the sparse terrain around, there is no way of approaching without being noticed. Sure enough, even though Jara tries to approach with stealth, the Devil Moth suddenly pauses in mid-air and then darts quickly in the party's direction. Alright, so we're going to be fighting a boss. Oh! It has massive HP! Okay, this is going to be rather problematic. Boss enemies are among the toughest enemies you will face. A single boss will be a match for your entire party. Like elite enemies, all bosses have a unique special ability that is always active. In addition, bosses have two additional advantages. They all receive bonus willpower at the start of each turn. And all, uh, all powers active on a boss will start with extra resilience, meaning the boss can take more damage before they are discarded. All right. Ah, good to know, good to know. All right, so this is going to be interesting. Right, okay, uh, I'm gonna just basically get rid of a bunch of elementalist stuff, gain willpower at the start of the turn, that sounds pretty good to me, improvise, I could obviously shoot him right from here basically if I wanted to, which might make sense to be honest, because I don't really care too much for swipe at this point, and we have nothing here with our, well we do have this, but yeah we have nothing here with our warrior to really make any, uh, any good movements, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around here, we're going to move around here. We're also going to get rid of this again, and we're going to move once more. So I want to move them around here like that. And then we're going to move here with this guy. And then we're going to... Yeah, okay, I can't, I can't use anything more. That's actually... <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Okay, so let's just do this and then end the turn. So the main reason why I wanted to do this is so that we can literally just gain additional cards. Oh. Oh. It flies. Of course it does. Uh, yeah, okay, that's actually slightly problematic. I was actually hoping that I could get into a decent... <laughs> a decent formation right here. And, uh, okay, we're going to just go for combo attacks then. We're just going to go for combo attacks. Barbaric Blow is probably going to be something really, really useful. Every time you play a card that deals melee damage, going to use that gonna try and get this and we're just going to get rid of all this right now because none of these are going to be useful for us we're going to use barbaric blow that's going to deal six damage which is actually really nice and we're going to have a little combo strike to uh, add on to that and then we're going to just use improvised attack there really isn't anything else i can do here so we're just going to do two of these we're going to get a, a whole bunch of combos going in there and that is all i can do uh i'm real <laughs> see now this is the this is what's really, really funny about this. I literally want defensive stance. I want defensive stance with my warrior so incredibly badly, but I am now all of a sudden not drawing it. Isn't that always the way? Yes, it is always the way. Okay, so dead eye is obviously going to be something that I love to take, so we're going to get rid of a couple of things to get that on him. And then power shot might be really, really good. This is also going to be really good too. And... Gonna have to get rid of this. We're gonna go forward there with that. And then I'm thinking... <sighs> we'll go for some combos, I guess. We'll go for some combos, maybe. I mean, we can go for one attack right here. For an additional combo strike right there. And we can use this to gain one extra... One extra willpower at the start of the turn. I'm actually going to just recycle that. And we're going to use power shot instead. Because that's 7 damage now. Look at how much damage that did. Wow, that was just an insane hit right there. <gasps> Double strike. Yes, and defensive stance. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, yes, this is great. Yeah, the elementalist can take a little bit of damage. I don't really mind too much. Oh, the boss has just buffed itself with goad. So it's going to deal even more damage. 
And now I have lost adrenaline as well. Okay, and it's now deciding to pull all, all other kinds of things around the place. Okay, yeah, well, that's that's that's, uh, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's not, not a big deal. <laughs> he says as he panics. Yes, indeed. Okay, so, yeah, let's just move back a little bit more here. And I'm going to use focus. And then we're going to just get rid of that. We're going to use defensive stance a little bit. We're going to get rid of uh, flame fan. And we're just going to move back like so. And then we can move forward like this. And double strike is unfortunately not going to be in range. I'm going to have to discard this and then redraw. We have swipe, which is just... Ugh, it is just terrible. And the target is out of range, of course. What about now? You out of range now? There we go. Okay, finally. Okay, two damage. Yeah, elementalist, take a little bit of the damage for me, please. I would appreciate it. Yes, okay. Gonna deal damage to the hunter, I see. Yeah, this this is not gonna go well. As you can quite clearly tell. This is not gonna go well. I have a bad feeling about this. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, we got we got kind of unlucky um with our with our powers that we gained almost immediately. So that was yeah, this is not, not not particularly good. Not particularly good. Okay, so let's do swipe. And I want to do double strike so badly. So I'm going to get rid of this and double strike is going to do so much damage as well. And we're going to gain... Look at that! Look at that damage! Look at the damage that we're dealing... Wow! That was crazy! Okay. Improvised attack. Can I not do it from this range? No, I can't. So I'm going to have to move forward a little bit. Improvised attack might actually... Oh, no. I need one. I need one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about... Um, what about this as well? Can I do this? Going to have to get rid of adrenaline. Can I do this from here? No. <sighs> yes. When is the elementalist actually going to be uh, somewhat useful? <laughs> it seems like not today. Not today. Not right now, at least. Okay, so we're just going to get rid of that. There we go. And hopefully it's not going to do anything too dramatic. And hopefully it's not going to kill my hunter. Oh. Oh. Don't do another attack. Don't do another attack. Oh, it's dead. Okay, yeah, my hunter is dead. Look at him. He's gone. One of your heroes has fallen in battle. It is now up to the remaining heroes to defeat the enemies and save them. When one or more heroes have been defeated, you will get plus two willpower at the start of every turn as the rest of the team rallies around to save their fallen comrades. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so it's only if all of our people actually die that it makes a difference. Okay, so well, we can just kill that. That's actually not too bad. Um, I'm hopeful that we can somehow revive him. Ah, he's just been wounded. Ah, oh, okay, so that's that's actually okay. An injury is a permanent addition... Okay, well, it's not really that good. A permanent addition to your hero's core deck that can be removed using Mystic Herbs. Oh, we have one of those. Okay, that's actually fine then. That is actually okay. I'm quite, I'm quite surprised that that, that is actually all right. Okay, good. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, that's in a line. I'm not a big fan of that. Defend four on any character. Yeah, that actually sounds really good. After you play a card that deals magic damage on all future attacks, deal plus two. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take stone barrier and replace swipe. <gasps> we have more level ups. Look at this. Oh my. This is gonna be super fun. Okay. Uh, savage blow melee attack six. Enemies cannot perform combo strikes. Uh, we've got bulwark seven. Defend. Whoa, that's oh resilience is super good too. Okay, we're just gonna replace that. There we go. The hunter can obviously take something else as well. Uh, dead eye is really insane. I'd like to get another dead eye. Can I stack these? Can I get two of these? Maybe I'm maybe I'm able to get two of these. That would be actually kind of crazy. I can upgrade this, or I can take another one. I'm going to take another one. I think that's much better. <gasps> and a bow. Look at that. Oh. An item of legendary power. Okay, so we have a dragon scale shield. We have Ravi's mantle. We have the wall. And we have a soul gem, which is a legendary crafting material. Wow. Okay, so there are some really, really crazy cool things here. Whenever you gain defense this turn, gain, gain the same amount again. Wow. Wow. That's, well, yes, you know how that is. If you have defensive stance active with the warrior and, uh, oh, look at that. After you're attacked, defend one. 
Really? Okay, wait a minute. What about the other things? Let's actually just take a quick look here. We, we need to make sure that we're taking a look at everything equally, because otherwise I'm going to miss something that is super, super powerful. Uh, although most of them do seem to be very strong. All attacks deal plus two damage this turn. Draw a random damage card from your deck or discard pile. Mm. Okay, I'm not a big fan of this, to be honest. Okay, what about this one? Dragon Scale Shield, that's a little bit different. All melee attacks deal one extra damage for every four defense. Not a big fan of that. Okay, I'm actually going to take the wall right here. I personally feel like that is so incredible. And it appears Nea has been here. Malkin points out some writing carved into a stone slab by the point of a weapon. The writing is a message to any voiders following and describes where Nea has gone next. Leaving a trail like this is a dangerous gamble, but as you have little else to go on, the party decides to follow the clues to your next destination. Continue to follow Nea's clues to find out where she has gone. An adrenaline surge from your success has helped you to shrug off some of the injuries hindering you. And now we're basically all full HP, uh, although uh, he does have a wound, I think, still. And what? We're gaining even more stuff? Oh, wow. Okay, we're getting more food, we're getting mystic herbs, and we're gaining this. A jeweled dagger. Wow, I know who I'm going to be giving that to. I'm going to be giving that to our hunter, of course. He's uh, he's really good. He's, he, he knows what's up. All right, so that is actually going to be it for this episode of Trials of Fire. If you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. And uh, I'd highly recommend it. I personally feel like this game does everything really nicely. I feel like the roguelite elements are really cool. The ability to add wounds to your to your hero's decks and the fact that you can remove them if you have the ability to do so. If you have the resources available, that's always nice. You don't want it to be too unforgiving, especially in the first ever campaign that I'm doing. And I love the fact that you can explore around the world map. That gives you a whole other sense of the world. So it's not just moving from point A to point B to point C and so on and so forth until the boss it's actually you deciding in an open world environment where you want to go and I think basically balancing all of those resources that you have at the top there as well you know your your food and your mystic herbs and your money that all adds to the tension of everything too anyway that's going to be it I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time